Yes, yes, guys, and welcome to another video. Today, we're going to be giving you our honest opinions on Manuel Akanji, a player that splits opinion. Some people love him. Some people think he was a bargain. Some people think he could, he should continue to start games even next season. And other people think he's, a, he's an average player. He should be benched. He should be sold. There's all sorts of rumours going online. Now, I know, to be fair, you go online, you find rumours for anything. But I think it's a quite a good topic, especially given his price tag and how many games he's played this season. Now, before we get into the conversation, make sure you drop a like on the video and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well if you're new. Now, if we cast our minds back, right, of course, we remember that Akanji was signed, quite a shock surprise, uh, signing, 15 million quid from Borussia Dortmund. Most people thought he would be a backup player, fourth choice, fifth choice, sort of for rotating with Akanji, uh, with Ake, sorry. He's actually gone on and been one of our most played players, Played uh, 32 games this season and uh, playing 2,525 minutes, which if you compare that to Laporte, is 1,000 minutes more than Emeric Laporte. He's been a mainstay at the back, even when Laporte's been fit. Laporte's been on the bench and Akanji's played. And Pep Guardiola seriously likes him. Now, before we give our opinion on him, why do you think that Pep Guardiola likes Akanji so much? What does Akanji bring to the side that Pep Guardiola loves. Guy's got pace, uh, which is a, a good start. Um, and he he can also play, he can play out from the back. As much as he's not as good at playing out of the back from others, he can play out from the back. And I, I, I think Pep loves that. Pep loves that about him. You know what I mean? Pep's all about that game of it. Um, also, man's really good at like offside trap, as we've seen with Ryan at Rashford. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think, uh, honestly, I, I think. Uh, I think he's just per the, obviously this is personal opinion. I'll, we'll get into personal opinions in a minute. Pep wise, I think I genuinely think he's the ball playing ability. Ball playing ability. Yeah, yeah, as ball playing centre back, I think he's not as good as the others. He's not as good as the others, but I think he's smile FC, so he instantly gets in above the port, and he can do it. He can do it. That's why he, I think he gets thrown in consistently. He's got a bit of pace, ball playing ability. Like, okay. He can play them balls in into the midfield, and that he can. He doesn't do it all the time. He can do that. Mm, interesting. Hugh? I think the things that um, Pep likes the most about Akanji are, his, first of all, reliability. He's rarely ever injured. He's, he's available yeah. whenever you need. And he's and he's versatile. You know, we've seen him play either side of the, the centre-back position, and we've seen him play at right full-back as well. So, to answer that question, yeah, I think I think for me that's what stands out. Mm, okay, interesting. I mean, my, my view on, we'll just turn it to our opinions then. My view on Akanji is... is I've, I've I've respected him and liked him a lot more as the season's gone on. I think when he first when he first got into the side, thought it was mega. Thought what a bargain. Then we started seeing him play on the right side of a, of a of a back three. Didn't like it. Called it out straight away. Didn't like it at all. He's he then he then went through a bit of a rough period, and I, I felt sorry for him at the time. I remember doing the watch longs and thinking I feel a bit sorry for him because he was playing well until he got started being moved around. Then he started going into the central position of a back three. And I thought we really struggled with build-up play. And I do think he was a big part of that issue for me. However, in the last month, in the last two months, I feel that he has massively improved, as Ake has. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's some sort of thing that these players have been working on. He has been playing balls into the midfield a lot more. He has been getting a bit better on the build-up play. Defensively, still pretty solid, in my opinion. And, I, and I've, I've liked him a lot more. And as the season's gone on, I've thought, this guy's improving as the season's gone on. And I think he's becoming a real, real top player. I think, again, you look back at the fee that we paid, £15 million. Pound, I think regardless of whether you think he's min average or poor, I still think £15 million in this day and age is a bargain. Will he, will he compete for a starting spot next season? For me, no. But under Pep Guardiola, maybe. But I like him. I think he's a player that I'll definitely keep around the squad. Top player. He has that pace, as, as you mentioned, bro. You know what I mean? He's got that, that pace ability. And he is getting better on the ball. So, for me... I'm not one of these people that don't like him. I do like him. I think he's a good player. I do. I, I'm more realistic in my view than that. I feel some people are a bit unrealistic. I do think he's a rotational player. I don't think he's a player that should be starting week in week out. But we are where we are, and right now he's, he's playing well. And I'm happy if, if Pep Guardiola wants to send him for the rest of the season. I'll go with that. I mean, obviously personally, like it should be Laporte starting. It should be Laporte over a Kanji if you're basing it on ability, because Laporte is better than a Kanji. 
Um, but that, something ain't going right with the port. And I think had a Kanji not improved on the ball as much as what he has, I think he might have been forced into playing the port a bit more because he'd have been missing something that down too much. He might not have. He might have just full sent the way that we're going in it. But I think because he improved in the ball, I think that kept him in the side. Um, and like, like you said, his reliability has been mint. So like week in, week out. And then the versatility as well, like you said, like you can, you can move him about in that back line. So you can kind of just put him in wherever is needed uh, based on who's fit at that time. I think I like him. I I, I genuinely like Kanji. Um, I think he has a bit of a wobble sometimes. Sometimes I think side to side FC a little bit. Um, mm. But I, I like him. 15 million pounds is an absolute bargain. I think when you look at some of the performances that he's given this year, you can, he's definitely worth more than 15 million pounds. Um, I don't think I, I wouldn't sell him. I think uh, I like our, I like our back line as it is now. I'd only be replacing the port if he goes. And in then we're looking at players like Gvardiol, who then instantly become a starter above a Kanji anyway. Um, I think you've got to look at it at, for, for, on the face value. He's our fifth choice centre back, who's somehow managing to start week in week out because mm. he's clearly doing things right. He's mm -hmm. clearly doing things right for Pep. For fifteen million, it's it's one of the it's one of the biggest bargains you're gonna get uh, at this day and age for fifteen million to get a, a player a center half as well who will come in and do as good a job as he has for for this Manchester City team. It's it's absolutely unbelievable and unfairly on him. So many people be like, oh, but you know he doesn't do the same job that that Stones would or that Diaz would. And I say, I know. But he was not brought in to be Ruben Diaz. He's, he was not brought in to be John Stones. He was simply brought in because they're not reliable fitness-wise. And that's the fact of the matter. We love Laporte. We love Stones. We love Diaz. But over the last three, four, five years, all of them, all of them have had ongoing injury issues and you can't rely on them. So Akanji has come in and solidified what was what was frequently broken, essentially, in our centre-half partnerships. Mm. And that's why we haven't had that consistency that people are crying out for. Mm. And... Unfortunately for Akanji, a lot of people attach him to the part of the season where we did look inconsistent performance-wise. We weren't playing our best. We weren't fluid. We weren't finding Haaland. And City were finding their feet, if you like. It's not the City that you see in the last 10 games. But that's not solely an Akanji problem, um, unfortunately. I think defensively, he never really had any proper disasters where you'd say, oh, you know... That's poor. That's really poor. He could definitely have done some things better. But it was a whole team problem at, at that point. It wasn't just Manuel Akanji. So to go back to the very original point, for 15 million, um, to get a player who came in knowing his place, which was fifth choice, and he fought mm. his way to essentially first stroke, second choice, and held it mm. down as well, and kept us in that title race, kept us within second place, um, while Diaz wasn't around, while Stones wasn't around at times, while Laporte hasn't been around at times, you have to give the man his flowers. Mm. The, 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 the only concern in Agreed. there that I'd throw in there about Akanji is uh, aerial ability isn't the best. That's that's the only real concern. Say we have a corner on that, I'm always like, oh, if Akanji's there, I'm a bit like wary on that. Mm. Uh, there was a that, goal actually on a corner. I remember we conceded and he was just like nowhere to be seen on it. He was yeah. just like, it was pretty embarrassing. And I agree. That's the only real defensive thing. It's quite a big thing, to be fair, that, that yeah. he really lacks. Yeah, um, that, that, that's where I look at it and go, oh, a bit of a rip that ball. Luckily, though, in, in if we play in this three at the back, you, you have Rodri in midfield who's tall, you have Diaz who's mint, you have Stones who's tall. So yeah, there's we... plenty of other players in there to cover yeah. for, 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 for what Akanji doesn't make in that. In that in my that my thing with Akanji for a while was sometimes one of my, my little flaws in him was, and I'd only, really some, I'd only really pick up on this when I was at the games for whatever reason, because I you know you analyse the whole pitch when you're at the games, and I'd look at him and i go, his positioning could be slightly better for some one-on-one or, or when we're when we're in certain defensive shapes, maybe he isn't where he probably should be. But then fast forward to now, I, I referenced those last 10 games where everybody looks a lot better than they did at the start of the season. Ruben Diaz has excelled Manuel Akanji by a solid 10, 15% on top of what he, he already was, in my opinion, back in September, mm. October. And we know this with Ruben Diaz. He has that effect on whoever he's playing with beside him uh, in that center half partnership because Diaz sees these things. That's because Diaz is world class. In my opinion, Akanji is a top class center half, but there's a big difference between top class and world class. So our yeah. world class center half and Ruben Diaz, he's able to guide Akanji. He's able to be like, right, you need to be there. You need to do this, yada, 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 work together. And it just works. That's why we Laporte only has had the 1,800 minutes of football you're talking about. That's why John Stones hasn't been rushed back in because the partnership of Akanji and Diaz, there's no point in fixing what's not broken right now. They're doing exactly what they need to do. We've conceded six goals in 10 games. 
Mm-hmm. And both of those have played pretty well all those games. Yeah. No, it's mad. It's mad. To finish this off, just to sort of identify how good a piece of business this was for Manchester City. If we was to sell a Kanji tomorrow, try and forget about contract length and all that kind of stuff. What fee would you put on a Kanji's head to be sold if you was to sell him tomorrow? I'll score this could you. get some serious stick. This could get some serious stick as people are like, oh, a Kanji's not that good. You know, he's not, he's not as good as Ruben Diaz. I'm going to say genuine in today's market from what I've seen of a Kanji. And if you put him beside it, a world-class center half, like I said, in, in Ruben Diaz, easily, easily 40, 45, 50 million. It, considering you paid 40 million for for Ake when he first came through the door, I think a Kanji is the very least at that level. Okay. I, in my head, was 35, 40 mil. Okay. I'm going to go 40 mil. I asked the, the figure I had in my head. 40 million. Yeah. Let us know your well, thoughts. We're, we're in the, uh... the same place, isn't it? Like... Yeah. Let us know what you think. We're too high, too low. Let us know what you, what you, what file you, you'd put on a Kanji's head. And your thoughts on a Kanji. Where do you see his future at Manchester City? Do you think that Pep Guardiola could feasibly continue to play a Kanji next season? Or do you think he'll be demoted to more of a squad, rotational player? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, drop a like on it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one. See you later.